morning, everybody. I'm Andrew Irenzi, and today's lesson we're going to be talking about two different methods of squaring a room for a tile layout. Uh, one of the ways of doing it is the bisecting angle or the swing and aux method. The other way we're going to talk about is the Pythagorean theorem or the 3 4 5. So the first method we're gonna go over is the three, four, five. And we'll have a room here simulating our layout. We're gonna take our room, which is 10 by 30. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is measure the room. You're gonna get half of the room. If this is 10 feet, half would be five. So we're gonna make a mark at five feet. We're going to do the same thing over here. Measure the room, make a mark at five feet. This is establishing a control line. It's the first step in squaring a room. Once you get these two marks, you will snap a chalk line or with a straight edge and connect these two lines. All right, now you've created a center line, control line. Next step from here, is to take this room and divide this in half. If it's 30 feet, it will be 15. You make a mark, center mark. Starting from our center point, we're gonna go up three feet and swing an arc. Now from our center point, to the right or the left, doesn't matter which way you go. We're gonna go four feet and we're just gonna make a mark on the control line. All right. From your four mark, you're gonna use the five and you're gonna intersect the three line from here to here and create an arc, which is gonna be, you're gonna have a center point. Now you're gonna do the same process below the control line using the same numbers. We're gonna go down three feet, we're gonna swing an arc. We're gonna go back to our four mark, to your five, and swing the other arc. Once you've established both of these marks, you're gonna take a straight edge or chalk line, and you're gonna connect these two, making sure that your line hits your center control line. Now we're gonna learn about the swing and aux method. We're gonna take the same rule, 10 by 30, establish a control line and center point. From there, we're gonna take a number that's close to the end in the room. We'll pick 14. We're gonna make a mark on the control line at 14. We're gonna come from the center point, come that same 14 feet and make a mark. Next step is to take a number larger than 14 and create a arc at about a 90 degree angle from your center point from 14 and swing an arc. You're gonna repeat the process on the other side with the same number, 18, and you're gonna swing the arc. The same process is done below the control line. Take your 14, at 18, you're gonna be swinging an arc. Repeat the process on the other side of the control line. Once you've established these two cross points, you'll take your straight edge, and connect them, making sure that that line hits your center point of the control line. Now that all of this looks good in theory, we'll go over here and show you how it actually works in an actual setting. We have a little different room. We're gonna take this paper as five feet by six feet. I've already established the control line by measuring the room, dividing it 
in half and making our center point, which is the center this way. So starting from our center point, we're gonna go up 18 inches at about a 90 degree angle from our center point, and we're gonna swing an arc. Now from our center point, we're gonna come across on the control line 24 inches and make a mark. Now from our 24 inch mark, we're gonna go across to our 18 at 30 inches. And we're gonna swing that arc. Now that you control the top, now you have to do the same thing below the control line. So you do the same thing. You take 18 from your control line center point and swing an arc at about a 90 degree angle the same way you did the other side. You're going to go back to your 24 inch mark and do the same thing. Use the same number 30. And swing it off. Now that we have created our arcs and our center point in the arcs. We're going to connect these three lines with straight edge and making sure that it hits right through the center point. As we do there. Now, if we have done this correctly, we can use a framing square to check it to make sure it is perfectly square. Now, as you can see, we're right on the money. Now we're going to do the swing and walks method. We're going to use the same exact control line and center point. From our center point, we're going to measure over 20 inches and make a mark on the control line. We will repeat the process on the other side, slide it right over, make a 20 inch mark. Now from your 20 inch mark, we have to pick another number that's larger than 20. We'll pick 25. So at 25 inches, at about a 90 degree angle from your center, swing an arc at 25 inches. Now this has to be dead on. You cannot be off with this. Same on the other side. Creating an intersection. Do the same thing below the control line. You're using your same numbers, 20, 20, and your 25. Swing your arc and repeat it on the other side.
Now you take a straight edge and you want to put them on your cross marks. making sure that it hits the center point of your layout. So as you can see, all your points line up. To double check, you put your frame and square in there, and you can see that it hits on both sides, creating a 90 degree perpendicular line. Install the floor correctly, you must establish square. I just showed you two methods, the Pythagorean theorem, three, four, five, and the swing and arcs method. Both of these will be very advantageous to you on your floor installations. I'm Andrew Irenzi. Thank you for watching.